Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to the Pearl of Wisdom Show, where we're going to be ranking all the NHL teams in the league we've already did, from the Ducks to the Avalanche. And today, I'm doing something special for y'all. We have one of the finest in the land, Sports Beard in the house to help us out. Right on, buddy. So, Mr. Sportsbeard, how would everybody know who you are? I, I mean, I know who you are, and anybody who knows anything about hockey on YouTube knows who you are. But how would anybody else know who you are, my friend? Well, you might see me in the chats as, as my actual name, Jeremiah Maxwell, but I'm also the uh, coordinating producer of the Shakedown Sports Podcast. Check out the Space Sport, uh, Shakedown Sports Podcast. We do uh, 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 NFL football, primarily the New York Giants, but NFL football. And, uh, you know, I have my own show uh, also called The Sports Beard, where I talk hockey every Saturday nights, take the summers off usually because uh, living in Alaska here, got to have those nice summers. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. Alberta guy. Oh, yeah. So. Got to get out and enjoy the sun while you got it. Oh. So, yeah, man. Perlo, thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. I love talking hockey. This is going to be a blast. It is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the summers here in Alberta are just the freaking best. I love them. I love them. But, uh, okay, we are going to be looking at the – we're going to go – we're going to be looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets somewhere around the Montreal Canadiens because, you yeah, know, I don't edit or – you know, think about what I'm doing yeah, before we do it. Now we just we just get into it. And all you people out there, you're gonna you're, you're gonna hear one of the finest in the land here. Sub yourself up to me, the Sports Beard on YouTube. Sub yourself up to him. I'm watching you. If you're you know if you don't, I'm gonna send you to the Perlo's house of spanking. Perlo's house of spanking. Sub to Perlo house too, house. too, man. Oh yeah, I got like 49 and I hit a grand. And then, yeah. then the then the, the chi ching starts flowing in, buddy. So we got to yeah, get into a G, tonight. right? Yep. All right. Okay. Let's look Absolutely. at the Columbus Blue Jackets now, and sure. uh, we're gonna be, of course, look at talking about uh, the big one, right? What did you think about the Columbus Blue Jackets getting Johnny Goudreau, my friend? So I thought the whole time, Perlo, that he was not going to go where people thought he was going to go. Oh. I kept here in New Jersey, and I was like, mm, "Yeah." I just it, the fit didn't feel right to me. Yeah. Um. I I expected him to. I once he we knew he was going to free agency. I was sure he was not going back to Calgary, and I felt bad for the fans there. But also, like you know. It's like, hey, the guy worked his butt off there. He was in that organization for 12 years, and he's earned the right to be a UFA. So no will will. I'm sure that doesn't calm the Calgary Flam, uh, Flames fans down at all, uh, considering they lost two of their best players in this offseason. But, you know, I wasn't shocked, and I actually was – I kind of thought Columbus in my head would be a dark horse. Um, and honestly, like, I think he would have signed with Philly no problem, but it seemed like Cliff Fletcher just didn't want him. And I don't know. I don't get it. I, I don't know what I they're doing in Philly. It's funny you're saying that. I, well, uh, they had to get rid of some cap space, but I get the kind of. I felt. I kind of felt the same thing. I think they look what they're drafting in Philly, and we'll be doing Philly down the road. They're taking big, big wingers. Like they're they're trying to be the old Philly again. So, yeah, yeah that's that's kind uh, of what I think is going on there. I'm part of it, anyways. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But what do you think about Goudreau and Lion Ape being on a line together? You think that's going to work out? Well, uh, how can it not? Because Goudreau is one of the best playmakers in the NHL. What do you have, 80, 75 assists last year? Yeah. I mean, uh, he was a 115-point player. Uh, Lion, I know Line A was a little bit down. I don't think he played. I think Line A had a short. Line A didn't play the whole season. I think it was like fifty six games. Still had like twenty six goals. So he was on pace to have like a forty goal if he played a whole eighty two. Uh, if he stays healthy and, and can improve his two way game, which I think you know Brad Larson, the coach of the Blue Jackets, is still kind of cut from that towards cloth. They're going to still play that defensive first. Um, you mentioned Philly, though, them not, you know, they didn't make the trade because they were going to be over the cap. Well, I mean, the the Blue Jackets signed them and they had to trade Bjorkstrand for a bag of nickels. So, like, it, you know, they got one of the best players available to hit the free agent market in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, an, an exceptional playmaker. I can tell you, 
I went to the NHL All-Star Game this year in Vegas, by the way, first time. Oh, cool. And uh, met a lot of great Blue Jackets fans. They're super excited about their team. And, uh, you know, the only thing I'd say about Columbus, and I'm sure you would agree, is we do have a little bit of question marks about them up the middle. We just have to see how, you know, uh, the the young kids, Sillingers, uh, you know, I think there's two of them. There's Owen and Cole, right? Kent Johnson. Kent Johnson. Yeah. He's supposed to be center. But they're playing yeah. him on the wing right now because he's a little on the young side, 19 years old. But he's supposed to be a beast down the road for sure. Yeah, it's well, men like Johnny Taves. He can do it. Let's just see what they can be. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Blue Jackets, man. I want to see them go. These markets, they have really good fans. People don't know Columbus is a great sports town. Uh, I'm not, you know, if you don't believe me, just ask NHL legend Doug McClain, right? Who started the Blue Jackets franchise as their first GM. Awesome fan base uh i think you know the boquist trade i think they got the better end of that so deal I. with seth so do i yep um they got a great team man the only yeah. thing I, I give them a knock on for me is uh i they okay i got a theory about the eric goodbranson signing yeah because uh i'm uh, eric goodbranson he 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 had his best year in calgary with sutter besides that he's yeah. like he's been very overrated his whole career uh, but yeah, he yeah. did have a good year last year with Sutter, and maybe he'll keep that up. For four million, man, oh man, that was a lot of money for four years. But here's my theory: they gave Goudreau yeah. nine and a half, right? Nine seven five. I think part of the reason why they got Johnny over is that him and Good Branson are tight, and he went, "Look, we'll we'll give Gooby." Four million for a couple of years if you come over here, and they looked at it as okay. Gabranson's really a two million defenseman. We'll give him two million more to make Johnny happy, and we're basically like paying Johnny almost twelve million. I think that's what they did. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm gonna guess that Goudreau and Gabranson were locker mates in Calgary <laughs> based on their last name. Yeah, if they do it that way. Um, yeah. So that doesn't surprise True. me, and I know that. Um, I, uh, I think Goudreau did spit and checklets right after he signed, and I think he said just that about Gabranson and them being friends. There you go. Um, I agree with you about Gabranson, obviously heavily touted out of the Kingston Frontiacs. I think probably didn't hurt that Doug Gilmore was involved. He's kind of like a Canadian hockey legend, right? So yeah. um, I think that I think they're all and Don Cherry also being a Kingston guy, probably sold this guy was a gonna be a big I I, I thought Gabranson was gonna be a was gonna be a beast. But I also say this, man, back in the day, defensemen used to mature a lot slower. And we've put a lot of pressure on these defensemen to be a lot better, a lot younger. That's true. And we saw guys, we've seen guys do it. I mean, Kale McCarr, but Kale McCarr might be the best player in the NHL, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I, he is so fun to watch. I, you know, I, I've never seen anything like it. I'm not old enough to oh, have yeah. seen Bobby Orr, but he's incredible. You know, I, I'm and, with uh, you, buddy. I, 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 use, I use the name Orr when I'm talking about McCarr, same thing. I think that Gabranson will fit in okay there. Obviously, I think by the time he gets to the back end of that contract, he's definitely going to be a bottom six D. Um, I think they're also banking on the cap's going to go up. How can it not? It feels like, the, at least in the States, with the revenue all we're hearing is that they're doing really, really well, the NHL. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. But, I, you know, again, I think the real question for them is like what we talked about is how they're going to look up the middle. Um, and to me, put, put, put Johnson in the middle. Yeah, put uh, put uh, Cole Sillinger in the middle. That's how those guys learn. Uh, Johnny Taves did it, and then you know they were winning cups pretty early in his career. And you just never know when those guys' windows close. So I think everybody thinks they're going to get twenty years out of a player in the NHL. Now that's just not the case with how fast the game is now. It's just so fast. Yeah. Um, so we'll, you know we'll see. But I, you know, I, you know, I know that 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 was universally panned. He's thirty. I mean, he's 30. Yeah. He's not even old. I mean, if he was 35, it would be a joke. But, like, it's – no, it, I don't think it's a terrible deal. Um, and I just think it's a going rate right for defensemen. Um, and he's kind of like a middle-tier defenseman. He got a great deal. I, I think he's sure. at six. I think he's – on this team, he's a four. He's six now. No, I, he, yeah. he, he's a four. 
I think he always has been. Uh, he, he's never been a four. He's been played there. And until Sutter got a hold of him, he didn't know how not to run around and try to hit people. Because that's right. unfortunately he had a lot of coaches that just wanted him to hurt people. But he went out of position to do it. And nobody told him. And finally Sutter said, look, you only hurt people if they're in your way. You don't go out of your way to hurt people. Look at Zadaroff. Well, you hurt, yeah, count. you hurt your team if you get yourself out of position like, too, Chirot's right? It's horrible at that. We'll see how he does in Detroit. But, yeah, guys like that. Um, anyways, what's your score for Columbus? What's your score? One yeah, out I mean, of one to ten. I, mean, I, one think to ten. Gotta, I think you got to give them an eight, man. Eight. I mean, like they got – I mean – they got maybe one of the best free agents in a long time yeah. and arguably the best free agent available this year, right? Yeah, for sure. And they got a, a pretty decent deal, under $10 million for a guy that's 28 years old. They didn't give him a 10-year deal. They, I think um, he only got seven, right, because he obviously wasn't they didn't he give didn't him do the deal. Eight, they gave, yeah, because they didn't own his rights. Like Kachuk's deal with Florida, yeah. right? Which I like, know we'll get just, to them. But. He just wanted to go there. Okay. I'm gonna, I got to – man, we're going to go long on this video, but I don't care. Um, another thing, I, when I did my video, Where Johnny Goudreau Was Going video, uh, I fell for the home t stuff too. But I, I said in the video, I don't understand New Jersey, and I really don't think Philadelphia is going to get the cap space to sign him. So yeah. Columbus was yeah. my third team. But if you'll listen to the video, I really talked myself into New Jersey and Philadelphia. I had New Jersey one, Philly two. And I that was only if they got the cap space, but I didn't think they could. And then I had Columbus. I thought Columbus was the third team. Well, well to, to be fair, it did sound like, based on the interview I listened to with him and uh, Biz Nasty and Ryan Whitney, that he was very close to doing the deal with New Jersey, okay. but I don't think he wanted to go there. And I know he's from that area, but I think, you know, I think sometimes guys, it's a little detrimental. The one thing I got from him was with his family, he, and this is Johnny hockey. I'm talking about that. He just was tired of the West coast travel. Like, yeah. you know, instead of getting home at like midnight, he was getting home at like four in the morning. And yeah. I think he, I think he just feels like be, playing on the East will prolong your career. And look, man, the, <laughs> The Ovechkins and Crosby's been doing it for a long time, you know. So, like, there are, you know, there is something to be said for like thirty-minute flights and minute, you know, hour drives yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, and yeah. and you know, I love my family, but if I got millions of dollars, I don't know if I want them like down the street, honestly. Yeah, five hours you. away. That's that's not bad. So they can't come by, like you know, cousin Billy popping yeah. by every day. Okay, enough. Let's get to the Dallas Stars. I gave them a seven and a half, so we were close. Okay, okay great. Yeah. Seven and a half. No, um, so okay, yeah. So by the way, he had um, uh, Beard here hasn't thought about this, Jeremiah. If you want to say he hasn't thought about this, he's doing it right on the fly. I'd already thought about my score before we started. Sure. Okay. Well, no, but I. Yeah. Yeah, so here's what I'll say about Dallas real quick. I mean, I love the Marchman signing. Hmm. Um, that was a great oh, so signing for I. them. I love that signing. Um, that was great. The thing, thing with – here's, I mean, the elephant in the room is those those $9 million contracts. Tyler Sagan is going to be the highest paid player this year in the NHL. More than Connor McDavid. Now, he's only 30. He's had a lot of injuries, okay? If he could return to form, like – the form that Tyler Sagan, we know he can have, this could be a good thing. But I think it's Jim Nill is the GM there still, correct, if I'm wrong with Dallas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just – they're in such a rock and a hard place. Now, they got a great goalie, Ottinger, incredible. Yeah, that um, they got to pay. I, yeah, they're going to have to pay him, and that's why they let uh, the defensemen walk because they had a, a plethora of young defensemen. Yeah. They may have – the second best defenseman in the NHL and Miro Heiskanen. Close. I mean, yeah. what? A, yeah, what a. He's 23 years old, too, man. And, and you know, they got Essa Lindell, they got Hockenpah, they got a night. I mean, they did. And Ryan Suter, who they have on a cheap deal, right? He's not making anything compared to what he was making in Minnesota yep. after the buyout. Yep. The D's not bad. 
Yeah, they're great. It's and their young forwards are really stepping up. So like like Jamie Ben to me, if if like his it feels like his career is like over. Pretty much. He's had too many injuries and stuff, and it just sucks. I love that guy. I think he I think the world of him. I think he's a tough player. It just sucks. He just you know, like when they went to the cup finals, I feel like they really would have gave Tampa Bay a run for their money, but they just weren't healthy by the time they got there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the bubble year. So, um, yeah, I mean, they really didn't make the, uh, really the only move they made is Marchment, but they've got, you know, Colin, like how do you Colin not Miller. Awesome? Colin Miller. Uh, oh yeah. My bad. I forgot about yeah, Colin Miller. About yeah, yeah. But they, nice, nice cheap defenseman to replace Klingberg. Right. right. So, uh, not that you're going to replace Klingberg's offensive ability, but, um, you know, that's a whole different story. We would probably do a whole episode about the debacle of John Klingberg's uh, U- pending UFA, right? So, yeah, man, I mean, I, I liked what they did. I, I mean, I, I don't think they had a lot of room to do a whole lot. I'd probably give them a six, but, I mean, that's just because they're kind of handcuffed with the with the Sagan and Ben contracts. And until Nil could figure that out, I, I think if, if Ben gets injured, they might just say, hey, man, why don't you go on long-time IR? We'll let you finish out. I mean, what does he have left on his contract? I, I can look that for I'm you if you don't have to now. do it. It's stupid. Uh, 2025, yeah. so he's got a couple yeah, of years Yeah, he has three there. years, yeah. counting this coming year. So, yeah. yeah. So, really, man. If, but, you know, his cap hit's not terrible. Oh, uh, it's nine five. Nine five. I mean, I it's know. terrible. Both of those guys yeah, are the production terrible. and stuff you're getting. It's just not great. Both right? of those yeah. guys are terrible on this lineup, and they couldn't do anything about it. Which really, you can't blame them. But you, I suppose. I mean, you got to remember they got that contract a long time ago. It was just a bad contract yeah. right from the get go. So it almost it takes yeah. it takes points off of them every year that they're on the team right now. As far as yeah. if you're going to give them a rating, I did. You said a six, and that's you know, we're not too far apart. The only reason why I gave him a little higher, sure. because sure. I gave him a six and a half, but that's because yeah. I love Lion Bischel that they got in the draft at number eighteen. I love, love, love this kid. Okay. And Dallas has yeah. been fantastic at draft and development. They're one of the best in the league. At drafting yeah. players, they look at the players they have, and they never draft but late first, right? They uh, yeah, they do they're... fantastic with Ropo Hints and Jason Robertson, and uh, you know guys like and he he in when they did have a, a top level pick, they grabbed a fantastic player like you said, one of the best in the league. So, yeah, yeah I gave him a six and a half. They have a really deep prospect pool. A really deep prospect pool. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I, I mean, I think Nils done a really good job. And I don't I don't know if that was him that gave that contract to them, uh, to uh, Sagan and to oh, yeah. uh, Ben. But boy, yeah. it, you know, you, you know that if they're going to be successful, it'll be because those guys. I mean, I think Sagan can still find his game. I I just I know he's had a lot of injuries too, but he's still fairly young. I mean, thirty. But Ben is on the wrong side of 30. He's like almost 34. And I just feel like, you know, unless he can just really get healthy, you know, I think probably the long time IR is going to be the future for him, like a Shea Weber type contract. I mean, we knew when that contract was, was that offer sheet was given by the Flyers that that probably was going to be pretty ugly by the end of that contract. Even if, even if you think the world is Shea Weber, which I do, I think he's an incredible defenseman, yeah. but you know, it's just like, you know, he was even in the finals, he was like a shell of that's, what he that's was. That's the reason was, why so. Poyle traded him away. He knew he didn't have much life left. in. Okay. Let's yeah, get to a, the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. And uh, wow. Dude, there'll be a lot to talk about here. What do you got Absolutely. for what do you got for the Detroit Red Wings with the Perron move, the cop move, and uh, Ben Sherrod and all of that? Okay, so the eyes are planned, right? I have to say, I love David Perron. I think he is one of the most underrated players to ever play in the NHL. Mm-hmm. He is so good. I mean, I he's incredible. And, and um, he, this is the first time he's not signed a contract with the blues as a UFA. Right. Um, 
even though he's played all over the league. I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's a really great player. I know he's 34, but he takes care of himself. Uh, I love the move. Andrew Kopp, I mean, my wife is a Rangers fan. I do not know why they made that trade and did not try to keep that guy. I thought he was great in the playoffs for them. Can I just go in uh, on that? I don't. They they knew. Yeah, go, they, knew, go. they knew he was going to Detroit. Okay. When they made the move, okay. Okay. they knew he was going to Detroit. Okay. He's from so, Detroit. Yeah. He love- wanted to play with Detroit. He knew. They knew. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. That's good that you knew that. I I was surprised the rain. I mean, why wouldn't you want to play for the Rangers though? I mean, what a great franchise. I mean, like like they, if you know how they take care of their players and stuff. Yeah. I mean, but he's from he's from there, Detroit. He's hard. one of those guys that always wanted to play for his team. I get it. Right? So. I get it. I get it. I get it. One hundred percent. I love their roster, top to bottom. Honestly, I, I'm going to be interested to see what they're going to do with like guys like I heard were kind of out of favor. But God, I, would, I mean, that's a guy you want on your team. Like he's just gritty, nasty, and horrible to play against, and he can score goals. He had 30 goals last year in 68 games played. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, 62 points, and he's a point a game player. And he's, you know, I know they were not great defensively. They've got to figure out their goaltending. Which Huso, I love that signing. I won the HDH Fantasy Hockey League with Huso in goal. So I, I was a fan of Huso. Um, I thought he outplayed uh, Bennington all year for the Blues until the, the playoffs. playoffs yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah, I don't know, man. I like. I really like their moves. Um, the Ben Sherrod deal. We talked about that earlier when you mentioned Gabranson. That's probably not a great deal, but he's only thirty-one again. They probably lacked that. He's going to teach guys like Ronick and stuff. I uh, like Osterly. They've got some good players there, man. Uh, and that cider kid, wow. It, did they get the, the Germans from, I mean, oh, well, I, I don't know. They my, got the German headman. Like he looks like headman. A, yeah, he's so good. Man, but what is he? He's 6'3", six, six, three, 208. Oh. He's going to grow into that body at 21. Yeah. And he was the, when he won the call to right hands down. Right. So I, they just have to figure out their goal pinning and depth scoring. And I give him a nine. You gave him a nine. Okay. Um, I got a few things to say yeah. with what you said, by the way, I gave him a, I gave him a nine too. Um, and, but here's the thing. We did talk about it beforehand. I, when I first heard Ben Sherratt, I know Stevie Y is a heavy analytics guy, so I'm like, why are you giving Ben Sherratt four million for he's terrible defensively? He he people think he's good, but he's not. Um, and Oli yeah. Mata too. And then he got Hag. I'm like, what's he doing here? But last the last time he got Letty, who also is not very great, but he was a great power play guy. So I think he got Ben Sherrod yep. in here, like you said, to teach these guys how to play a heavy game. They need to play a he- you do need to play a heavy game, right? I think Ben Sherrod is o- over aggressive and puts himself out of position a lot, and maybe uh, the uh, new coach there, oh Lalonde, is that who it is that they got from Tampa Bay? Uh, he'll be able to help him out there at thirty one years old. But here's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're new But coach. here's the yeah. thing. Ben Sherratt gets a first at the deadline anytime you want because people people want – you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So people overrate yeah, them. They want that gritty defenseman. They want that gritty defenseman, the yeah, yeah. Gritty defenseman for the playoff run. So if they're not in a playoff spot, Ben Sherratt is on his way out. Oli Mata, he's just a veteran guy, and I believe – so, and the other cool move that they got was getting Kubalik from Chicago. Not that I think he's a... Yeah, really nice. Not that too. I think, yeah, it's only 2.5. But that helps out Philippe Zadina yeah. quite a bit. And they, they they need to get that kid going. I guess he's got serious, yeah. serious well, confidence. Got- like, he really beats himself up like crazy. So, right. and I right. think... They got Verana, but Verana really isn't a guy to do that type of mentoring stuff. It's not his deal. But I, I think maybe this Dominic yeah. Kobalik guy who's a Czech with him, right, hopefully will be able to help this kid yeah. 
Yeah, Brana, Brana Kubalik and Zadina All are all yeah. checks. Um, and Philip Peronic. Yeah, I would say Philip this Peronic, about Ron- another check. Yeah, I, yep, Veronica is a, yep, Veronica is a check too. Yep, yep, and I think they got a, a fair amount of them in their um, in their system too. They've got a couple of guys. They got that Bednar Bednar kid, the goalie, and then um, yeah, that might be it. But they, yeah, no, I, you know, I mean, they, they, if you look at their prospect pool, it's so deep. They've got almost two teams worth oh, yeah. of prospects. Donovan Sablango, um, wow, he's going to look they, like he's going to be a killer defenseman. I know. So I'll say this. I know as having 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 be, be I am a Capitals fan for the record everybody that knows me knows that. Um I love Jacob Brana. Obviously he was on the 2018 Cup run. He's a speedy winger. Um Jacob Brana very much has the same problem Anthony Mantha has. He has a tough time staying healthy. He played 26 games last year. Um but he's all, you know, you know, he had 19 points. He's a he's much more of a goal scorer than he has a Point producer, so I'll be interested to see if he plays with like a guy like Zadina and stuff. Uh, all those cats are pretty young. I mean, Zadina's 22, so you know um, I, they're not probably going to give up on him right away. But um, you know, the thing that you, that I notice about the Detroit Red Wings, and I don't know about you, is they still feel a little undersized, and I that's why I kind of you know, especially in the forward department, right? So even though like Bertuzzi's a nasty guy, he's not that big a guy. Not by today's NHL standards. Um, Lucas Raymond is incredibly talented, not that big a guy. Dylan Larkin's great player, not that big a guy. So I feel like they, you know, the Sherratt thing was also like, hey, we got a big guy we can run around. And that's still part of the game, right? Eisenman's still, uh, you know, he's still cut from that. You know, they couldn't win forever with uh, their offensive teams until they got a little grit, a little Shanahan, stuff like that. So. I just wonder if that's in his thought process, but I 100% agree with you on that. He will flip that Sherratt thing to probably, probably. two first rounds. Sherratt's going to flip off that Austin Matthews thing a couple years ago for probably two more seasons. Because right. you know how it goes. Yep. Um, so uh, there's so much we can talk, but we got to move on to the other ones. Uh, like I said, I gave him yeah. a nine. The only thing I will add is we move over to yep. Edmonton. The Tyler Bertuzzi thing, of course, the difficult yep. part is – him he doesn't he can't play in Canada. Right? So yeah, so like know. you go to the playoffs and your number one left winger can't play half the games if you're playing against a Canadian team. So how do you work out a contract for this guy? So that's gonna be the big thing there. All right. Well, I yeah, don't. Well, well I don't want to get too far into that, but I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Uh, uh Edmonton no, Oilers. Hey Pearl, it's definitely the uh, elephant the room for the Red Wings rumored at the deadline. Yeah. I think that that will be the case next year, the case next year too. If Detroit is not a playoff team, which I don't think they will be, not yet anyway, they could be, but that that East, you know, a lot of people thought it would be easy for Detroit to move over to the East because the travel would be so much better. But you know what? It's not been because it's so there's so many more good teams on the East. I really think they need to think about changing the playoff format. And just getting rid of the divisions and conferences and and stuff. So I don't know. It just feels like we could, uh, we could have some interesting matchups that would be way more fun. And um, you know, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, there's there's a lot of what reasons. About your guy? Uh, the problem is who's going to trade yeah. for him for the same reason that they want they might trade him. You know, like he can't get he can't get traded to a Canadian team. Anybody yeah. that takes him has to work out a contract that makes sense when he can't play in Canada. It's a big mess. Okay, Edmonton Oilers. My team, the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll send it over to you. Uh, they didn't do all that much. They got Mateusz Janmark, but they did get Jack Campbell, and I know you got a lot to say about that, so I'll hand that over to you. Yeah, so I like Jack Campbell. I've been a fan of him forever because he's an American kid, and I root for those guys and stuff. But, I, you know, we talked about this. I worry about – Edmonton did the things they needed to do, right? They kept – they kept pull you RV if they – you know, I don't know. Are they better than they were last year? That, that would be my question. Kane, they kept him. That was a pretty good – I think he fit in really well. That was a – that was probably the the – 
one of the best midseason pickups I've seen because we saw it so imp- – that, you know, remind me of, like, Chris Kunitz going to the Penguins, except for Kane was just putting up ridiculous points. I mean, he played – he had 39 points in 43 games played. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, you could say what you want to about a human being. He's just – He's a good hockey player, you know. I, I personally, you know, I don't worry about the off the ice stuff because, quite frankly, you just want the guy to come and show up and play hockey, and he certainly did that for the Edmonton Oilers. I think you could make the case for that, right? The, they needed to get younger at goaltending, um, and they did. Um, uh, I think Mike Smith is still probably going to be with them next year, too, if he's healthy, right? It looks like they're going to have Mike Smith and probably – Stuart Skinner, right? I don't know. With uh, Campbell being the starter. Uh, but they didn't fix what they needed to fix, which is their defense, right? Well, so, they sort of I mean, did. I'll, and, I'll explain that in a second and, when we talk about it. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, for, do you want me to give my rating for yeah, Edmonton? Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. They what really didn't bring it. it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I oh, give really? a six and a half. I mean... I like the I like the shot with Campbell. I just think you talk you and I talked about this before the show. Jack Campbell was good for the first. I mean, I, I he probably was the best goalie the first yep. two months of the season, right? Month and a half or whatever, and then he had injury problems. Okay, and the Toronto Maple Leafs were, regardless of what people say, they probably were the third best team in the NHL, and they should have rightfully beaten the Tampa Bay Lightning, in my opinion. And they were a much better team defensive team than they got credit for. Okay, they made mental mistakes, but the problem with Toronto is every kid that's you know that's from there goes and has the best game every time they go. That if you make a mistake, if they make a mistake, almost always they paid for it. And I don't know what the analytics say or whatever, but it just felt like that. I watched a lot of their games, and they had a much better defense in front of Jack Campbell than the Edmonton Oilers are going to have next year. So we shall see. I don't want to shortchange the. McJesus and all them cats because, you know, there's probably not two better offensive players in the NHL right now than Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. But you know what? They're getting older. And I keep telling people when McDavid loses his speed, what is he? Because it ain't going to stay with him forever. And, yes, he's a gifted player. But, I mean, is he Sidney Crosby? Does he play the two-way? Uh, is he great at the face-off? Uh, that's what it's going to take for them to win a Stanley Cup. And that's what that franchise wants because they have four of them and they know what it's like. And, uh, you know, you know, notwithstanding the owner controversy too, like I thought that was a big deal that nobody talked about. Um, uh, you know, um, yeah, six and a half for me. I, this I is the first time we disagree. we disagree a lot about a lot of things. Yeah. Connor McDavid yeah. is the greatest offensive player I've ever oh. set my eyes on. And I watch Wayne Gretzky. He's the greatest offensive yeah. player I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, his defense is impro- he's defensively he's improving under the new coach. Uh, but, I mean, when you're putting up that kind of offense, you can get away with it. I mean, he's a million times better defensively than Patrick right. Kane. And people think he Patrick Kane is a god, right? Uh, that doesn't well, he's matter. A ringer, he's though. absolutely it's different, built. Though, right? He's the worst five right, on five you. top six forward in the league. Patrick Kane, defensively. So <laughs> that's that's pretty bad. But um, here's the things that I did like about it. I totally get what you have to say. Uh, they, their defense is pretty much the same, except there's no Keith. And that is a huge addition by yeah. subtraction. Removing Keith from this lineup. Keith was horrible last year. Nobody wanted to talk about it because he's yeah, dunking yeah. Keith. He was horrible in Chicago, too. He was terrible. Yeah. Uh, and I guess he was yeah, a great like mentor it. for Evan Bouchard, but I don't know, man. It, like, I don't see how that makes up for just uh, uh, being diabolically bad on the ice. But removing him was great. Removing Cassian is awesome. Removing Armstrong. Yeah. Removing great- Armstrong was awesome. All of those guys were anchors on their line. I love Cassian as a human being and what he did in his life. And like what you, and, and what you mentioned with uh, Evander Kane, he said what, you know. Yeah, but he's a what's bust. What's that? Cassian's Ca- a bust. Cassian's right, a bust. But he, he, had an, he, had, he had an addiction problem. He got over it, and I'm very happy for him for that. 
And he went to Arizona where he can probably help out a lot of young yep. guys and maybe in the same situation. Wonderful. Okay. But he's terrible on the ice. Yep. Uh, Evander Kane was a great signing to me at $5 million for uh, for the time that he was on. He's going to be a field. Got he's you. a 40-some goal scorer. Probably not on any other team, but playing with McDavid, he's a 40-some goal scorer. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. And as far as whatever he did in his life or whatever, nope. like – He's a bad person. He's a bad person. Yeah, yeah. He had an addiction issue. I don't know if you know anything about addiction, but it take it brings out the worst in you. Yeah. He went and got help. Yeah, yeah. He sounds like he's yeah, got yeah. over it. So he's probably not a bad person anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and good for him for 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 yeah. getting over it and doing what they're yeah, doing. Right? Fun, so, yeah. and I think the oil. I I, I think the Oilers yeah. have done well. To bring in guys like that that have had problems in the past, because if you think somebody was a bad person, McTavish, who is considered one of the greatest character leaders of all uh, of all time, for the Oilers, yeah, he killed he yeah. killed somebody with a DUI in in, uh, in Boston. Yeah. I I never and, forgot that. I remember. World, I remember that. I have a friend Pat Meaden who grew up there, and he said that he went to a game there when he was playing for, and people were yeah. screaming murder at right. him after he'd been moved right. out. I got you. Yeah. No, I mean, people, like, yeah, you're, we're talking change. about Craig McTavish. And, and the like Oilers have always been the team yeah. that give people second chances, and it's actually the real reason why I'm oh, an yeah, Edmonton yeah. Oilers fan. It's not as much that I live in here in Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. It's that they have that kind of heart for people, and I love that about them. So, anyways, sure. I, I well, gave them an 8.5 for a lot of okay. – Jack Campbell, wow. I'm kind of with you on that. I got to see it. Like, he, yeah. he's been, Addition by he's a been inconsistent thing. his whole career. I'm with you on that. You know, I think he has, there's a really good chance yeah, yeah. that he's a hell of a lot better than they had, though. And that he'll work out okay. But oh, I'm yeah. with you. I'm uneasy about Jack Campbell in that contract. I'm with you on that too. But I gave him an 8.5 because right. they removed, they started removing players that were anchors on the ice. And there's a reason for that. Holland's son, I, I think it's Bob Holland or something like that. His son, huge analytics sure. guy. And he started, he's starting to speak into Kenny's ears and saying, look, you know, we got to keep Jesse Puglia Harvey. He's our best two-way winger. And if you say that here in Edmonton, people think yeah. you're nuts because they don't, he doesn't hit. Right. No, he's a great player. I like him. I kept, I don't understand why I hear his name in trade rumors all the time. I'm with you. Can I say this? I think you've convinced me just by the addition, by his subtractions to change my grade to yeah. seven and a half. I just like we talked about earlier. I am a little bit concerned about their. Uh, and beating, still, more and than I am too. Still, and you, you, you too. Can. I do like Kulak better in the top four, but let's face it: on a, most teams, he's not a top four, right? So, Bouchard will have right. to step it up this year. Cody Ceci it, actually had a good year last year, which was surprising to me. I have to say, Darnell Nurse had a better year defensively last year, uh, but. I mean, yeah. it, it, if you got Tyson Berry in your top six, you're in trouble. No doubt about it. Yeah, Tyson Berry. Yeah, Tyson <laughs> Berry. I'll say this. I think, I think Bouchard's your best defenseman oh, yeah. and going to be the Absolutely. best defenseman there in Edmonton. I love Darnell Nurse, uh, but uh, I got to go with my guy Ray Bros, uh Bouchard. He's oh, yeah. been such a Bouchard guy. I think he's going to be yep. a really good player. And then, you know, it really sucks, too, that they lost, like, a guy like Oscar Clefbaum. If that guy had stayed yeah. healthy, who knows? Like, that would have been a nice last shot defenseman they could have had there. He could have played him over, like, I don't know. It just really depends. And you, you hope Broberg develops. He's pretty young. Um, yeah, I mean, I just – you are right. I, I did – I think – you know, too. You know, you say this. They Edmonton has to be the reclamation city because not very many people want to go there, and it's really unfortunate. That's part of it. It's a beautiful city and a great well, place. I to wouldn't live. say it's a. It's you know, not a sexy I would, city. You really got to. You got to go out into the area. Like we have parks that connect all in through here and stuff, but the buildings are not sexy and stuff like that. It's not a sexy city, but well, yeah, who cares? a lot of people care. 
and uh, I don't blame them either. But it's beautiful. Uh, man. You know, I don't blame them. I wish the architecture was better here and all that kind of stuff like that. But the parks are nice, and there are some in redeeming qualities yeah. to Edmonton, no doubt about. It. Okay, we got another one that's going to be big time that we're going to. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Florida Panthers. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, okay. uh, I mean, just unpack it, dude. What do you think of that trade, Matthew Kachuk? <sighs> okay. So, I guess you have to say this is really where you got to start the conversation, right? W Florida didn't do anything in the postseason. In my opinion, if Washington was healthy, if Tom Wilson did get hurt, if we got any kind of a semblance of goaltending from the goal, I mean, you saw what the Capitals did with their goaltending platoon. They blew it up. I chalked off the wall. I was on his show for the Capitals segment. And, you know, like he tore the whole goaltending. Like he didn't bring back the minor league guys, mm -hmm. Phoenix Copley, anything, and Brian McClellan. So uh, I thought Washington could have beat Florida. So, and they should have, rightfully so. They probably coughed a game or two away, and it, everybody knew it. And then they got just – got manhandled by – and they added, you know so, – somebody said it. I don't know. I heard it on um, one of the one of the other podcasts. So it may have been – it may have been Spit and Chicklets. It may have been what uh, the Shifting Pucks guys. It may have been – I can't remember what it was from. But he was like, Bill Zito instantly did, like, one of the best build-up jobs and then systematically did, like, tear, tore down all his own work. I, I'm not – I'm not convinced they're a better team than they were before. I mean, I think I think it was a good move getting rid of Huberdeau. I think they had to get rid of Uyghur. I think they knew that. So I, I don't mind that trade. I feel like I feel like you gotta give Tree Living really he really the Flames fans should be kissing the ground that he walks on just because I feel like he he's keeping the Flames as a playoff contender for a couple more years now. Um I, I obviously don't think they're better, but than they were, but it's going to be really interesting to see. I, I love Matthew Kachuk, by the way. I'm a big Matthew Kachuk fan. He hasn't showed in the playoffs what he could be, but he had a couple big goals. Like he had the one against Edmonton in the first game. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know what happened there. I expected Calgary to give the uh, Colorado Avalanche everything they could in the in the Western Conference Finals, and uh, and unfortunately, an inferior team, but with maybe two superior players beat Calgary and did nothing to, you know, look as good as McDavid is, is he better than McCarr? So like, I don't know, but we're talking about Florida. So I'll just say this. Uh, I like the, I like the deal for Kachuk. They got the eight years. I don't think they overpaid at nine and a half. I think with the cap, it's going to be okay. Uh, what else oh, did they, they did do? Some great stuff. I mean, me. I'll, I'll get into that one. Colin White, yeah, I mean, Colin White. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, Rudolph Balzers at seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, I can't believe that. How the heck did not somebody not That's give good... Rudolph Balzers more than that? I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to go to San Jose. Where was, he playing? San Where was Jose. Balzers playing? Left? And he was okay. He was That's just a, a very underrated player. I, I just can't believe they got him for seven hundred fifty thousand. Beautiful move. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's super young, See, right? 25 Those years are the old. first round he's draft a... picks they gave up. Colin White, 25. Rudolph Balzer. See, they went out and got these young guys that can fill in the roster. So I didn't mind it. Right. I didn't you mind it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of the Kachuk move? I thought the trade was, I thought it was time for them to make a change anyway. I, I think that Kachuk will give them more grit and make them a more defensive team, which is going to help them in the East. But I don't know that they don't need the goal scoring, do they? I mean, they were they scored well, like they're gonna, goals. They're going to play. They're going to play a lot this year. They're not going to be like I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go into my take then. Last year, I was saying yeah, all go, year go. Florida is not going to get past the second round because you can't play like they do and get past the second round. And I will. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if they were beat by Washington, and sure as heck they didn't because they don't out. They can't play more than one way. Right. So, yeah. Bringing in okay, Huberto. I love Huberto. I don't, okay. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I don't know. There's something about Huberto that doesn't hit me right. He's invisible. He's, he's a invisible great, in the playoffs. He's a great playmaker. He's 
He's yeah. not like but, people compare him to Joe Thornton. Huberto is not good defensively. Joe Thornton was a beast defensively and could pass the puck just as good as Huberto could. He's one of the greatest playmakers. Yeah. In the he's probably the greatest playmaker in the league, maybe. You know, maybe Goudreau is right up there. He's he reminds me Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could say Crosby. You could say Crosby. He, yeah, but yeah, no, really good. Or Panarin or something. But there's yes, just something like, missing yeah, from his overall game that I'm not impressed with. And at 29 years old, I'm not paying yeah. him $10 million a year for eight years either. He's. I just think he's going to fall off the vine right around 34, 35, and that'll be the end of it. You got to remember, he wasn't a superstar yeah. for me when he was a kid. You know, he, it was like 25, 26, he started hitting these numbers. Wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. But he didn't was... hit it out of yeah. the park right away. He's kind of a late blooming superstar, even though he was drafted very yeah. high. He was third overall, actually. But, but, um, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a lot of guys. They, I, there is a chart that came out that said guys that were all stars up until a certain age. I think 35, you're going to see a big drop from Huberto. We'll see if I'm right or wrong, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think you're I think you're bang on on this one, Steve. I really do. I really agree with you. I think 100%. I think I do. I, I like the move for Florida. But I love, I love Matthew though, Kachuk. A and lot, they get a, a lot, a lot. And that was hard to give up. Yeah. But I think that he wouldn't. Wasn't he a cap casualty more than anything, though, for them? He, because they were. could have been other players that they might have looked at moving instead of Uyghur, but there was just something that wasn't working with yeah. Uyghur. I know the fans can't stand him, and I don't know why. He he was a beast when Ekblad yeah. went down. There was something there. Maybe he was – I don't know what it was. I don't know why they – Would you rather have Mackenzie Uyghur or would you rather have Mark Stahl? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that and that that's, that leads me to the next part is the defense Stahl. is just terrible now without him. Stall in your top yeah. four, Carlson, oh, he's just ass. Yeah, the defense is not good, but they can fix that throughout the year. And yeah. I, Gudis, I think Gudis is really underrated. He doesn't score a lot of points, but yeah, he's, he's nasty bad. to play against. Gudis isn't and bad. He's not yeah. a bad. I would skater. say he's their third best defenseman now for sure. By a long shot. By a long shot. Yeah. Well, and they need Ekblad to be healthy yeah. for a if, year. I if mean, that, that just seems gets to not injured, happen they for are him now. Screwed. Like uh, they are screwed. Yeah, good. They were so good defensively when he the first part of the season when he was healthy. I just feel like they're such a different team when he's not in. And and Zito made a lot of those trades, you know, because his salary cap was off, so they could add all that, you know, like the Giroux and stuff like that. So. I, I thought he gave the college try. I thought they were going to try to play a little bit more defensive when they got to the playoffs. You know, they. Well, you know, actually, they just you know what? They yeah. sort of did. What, what, and that was the problem. They didn't know how to. They might as well have just went balled out offensively what, because okay. they couldn't. They, they might as well just went That's balls big, out offensively because they couldn't play defense to save their life. They couldn't yeah. play a trap or anything. That's why. <laughs> That's why uh, well, Brunette got They fired. couldn't score on the power play. Yeah. Well, he did, yeah. Well, he did get rehired, right? I yeah, yeah. I'm with you. What's your grade? What did you give him? I didn't give. I'm curious. I, well, I didn't give. I want to hear yours first because you you, I thought about it. So you're doing it right off the top. So I I want to go TBD with them because I feel like there's so much. I don't know. I'll give him a so, seven and a half because of the thing. Kachuk. Yeah, I, just, I think nice. you and I both on this one. Matthew Kachuk is my favorite yeah. player in the land. I freaking love him so much. And I do think yeah, well, that he's a unicorn of a player. A guy that can, is elite defensively, yeah. elite offensively, and can beat you up at the same time as being an incredible leader and intense and all. He's like he's everything packaged in one player. He doesn't miss games. He doesn't, he doesn't miss, miss games. games. Guy's insane. He's got everything. You know, I love him. He's he's the, he's, he's the American Ovechkin that doesn't have the shot. Yeah. He's got the hitting yeah, ability, I guess you could say physical. That, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's better. He's better than Ovechkin he, ever was defensively though. Already at twenty four years old. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. He, well, he's a better, yeah, it, he's not as big, obviously. Ovechkin's 6'3", like 240. I mean, Kachuk's like yeah. 200 pounds. Um, but he had 100 points. He's a 40-goal scorer. Those don't grow on trees. And he can pass. He had 62 assists, too. I like, love. No, I love Kachuk. I'm a huge Kachuk fan. I think it's a great ad for Florida. Um, and, I, you know, I'm really, it's awesome to hear your perspective you feel like they had a little bit of the big. They have the same thing that Dallas has, though. They have an albatross with with Bobrovsky. They've got that ten million dollar contract that doesn't expire yeah. till twenty twenty six. How are they going to get rid of? They got they, they a hope. They got to eat out of they got to something in camp. Remove him because Spencer Knight's going to take a spot yeah. this year, probably. Yeah, he's already ready, he's already ready to yeah, be the yeah. goalie. I think, maybe we'll you know, see. He's I, only you know, twenty one. I, and I like yeah. the Colin White move. I love the Rudolph Balzer's move. But like you said, it's it's yeah. even though I know my defense is ass because I lost Uyghur, I'll just hope I can find a defenseman. Yeah. Because getting Matthew Kachuk is worth almost anything, I think. Okay, let's – sorry. Uh, let's go to yeah, the LA let's Kings. Rock. Let's rock. Didn't do all that much, yeah. really, but uh, right. except for Kevin Fiala. What did you like that? Yeah, so he is an enigma we are the, to me. We are the same I people, don't, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I just he had a great year too. He had like eighty five points. Um, but I also wonder if that was because of some of the skill he was playing with in uh, Minnesota, wasn't he? Playing no, with he played down, a lot he too. Down the lineup uh, quite a bit. Yeah. He, look, but, I like it for LA because they did, they gave him a little bit more money than I would have liked to seen a guy like him mm. get, but he's twenty six. Um, I know he's a little bit of a. Yeah, I don't know. I, they they look like a. You know what they kind of remind me of? They don't have anybody really great. If Dowdy and Quick are healthy, and then Cal Peterson can show that he has the ability to maybe kind of take the reins for 40, 45 games, kind of split the games with quick. Cause I think ideally that's what Rob Blake would like them to do. Um, I love that team. I, 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 I honestly them to make the tell you right now, here. if that team tell me, they would have beat the shit out of Edmonton. Excuse my language. They would have beat Edmonton badly and Byfield's up and coming. Right. I know uh, also Ray Bro's favorite player. That's oh, not on the, uh, he's a big Byfield the guy, Edmonton yeah. Oilers. Yeah, loves him, loves him. And he's 6'4", 215, yeah. and he's 19. So when he grows into that body, he's going to be – he's going to be – he's going to be on, say, Kopitar, right? He's going to be – and he plays with Kopitar. So I, at the Kopitar deal is going to – you know, they're, he's probably going to retire, what, two seasons anyway? One or two seasons, maybe. You know, they lost Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown hung it up. Uh, uh, they said they're going to make a trope. I liked what Blake did. He said a while ago the the rebuilds o- over. How do you not like their their talent pool is incredible. Uh, so Jersey, I just like everything about that team. They don't have any one player that's going to scare you, but they got a lot of guys that can score. And to be quite frank, look at what Philip Deneau did. Philip Deneau had what twenty seven goals and like. Philip Deneau is, in my opinion, has supplanted himself as the best defensive center in the NHL. And and because Bergeron is old I still and Crosby say Bergeron's is old. The best, even now, I um, say. But, but he's right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, he's incredible. He, yeah, but Philip Deneau is going to win as many. Fa- yeah, I mean, Bergeron's arguably the best faceoff oh. guy I've ever seen in my life. Um, and, uh, but, uh, I really love to know. I 100% think that to know was the reason Montreal made it to the finals. He was such a great defense. Yeah. He wasn't scoring in the playoffs, but he was stopping all the other good centers from scoring and the matchups. They didn't play anybody that was too great. And I think that's one of the big reasons why Vegas went out and got Jack Eichel, whether you want to say that or not, they were worried. Like they weren't that great up the middle. You know, they lost a cup to the caps. I'm not saying, look, I love the caps. They're not, they don't have the best center core. Uh, it's decent. Um, but, no, I mean, I really like – I mean, they didn't make a ton of moves, but, you know, they're, they're, they're just – yeah. And I, I thought that was a good move for them. I, I You know, they, they got Jack Hughes in the thing. They got a bunch of players. I don't know – I don't know where your thoughts are. I, you know, that one – I give them an eight just because I don't 
you know, there's probably some room for improvement there, but like they didn't have a ton of cap space anyway, I don't think, to move maneuver. But um, you know, they kept Brendan Lemieux. I thought that was a good move. I actually so like yep. uh Brendan Lemieux's game. Yeah, I think that's a guy you need to have on your team, especially come playoff team. Um, I'd like to see him be a lot closer to his dad and style of play, but he also missed like 30 games last year. So um yeah, I just I'm a fan, man. I you know I you know of course I'm a West Coast guy. I get to watch a lot more of the West Coast games, uh, but I, I'm a huge, huge fan of of what's happening with um, with the LA Kings. And and watch out, man, because uh, they they might be right back in the mix for Western. Because look, the West is kind of down right now, and there's not you know. I'm and Colorado's great, but what's happening with them? Oh, like you know, we didn't get into that. They're, they're not going to bring cap. I don't. Uh, well, what? What? What did well, you say? We didn't I'm sorry. Get to talk about Colorado because I already did it. But I, I'll tell you what. I will be yeah, immensely no. amazed if they get Gorgiev to be a number one goaltender. I will be immensely amazed. Yeah, that's definitely. Well, yeah, that's definitely the issue there, right? With Colorado, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're they're. I mean, again, Sackick is a little bit handcuffed by. I mean, they got Nathan McKinnon to think about too, right? Yeah. He's going to get paid. So he's been making – he's been the cheap – he's been the best player in the NHL for money, hands down. I think they the can live like without – we, we can't. Years, we're, right? This is L.A., so I'm not going to talk more about it. But, okay, Kevin Fiala, I yeah. you, what your first words out of your mouth, I don't know what to say about this dude. Yeah. I mean – Yeah. He's – he's Yeah. Doesn't he feel he's like a, a punk one. hog to you? Like he, but you know, maybe LA is like the perfect team for that because McClellan's system is basically shoot from anywhere. Just shoot, 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 shoot. That's, yeah. He, it's totally a shoot. So yeah, Kevin yeah. Fiala will probably work out really well that way. He's got great speed on the outside. He drives to the net. I give him that. Yeah, but he's got to have the puck yeah. on his stick. Yeah, I don't know we'll about him playing with Andre Kopitar to tell you the honest truth. Um, I, I almost maybe no maybe he is the best for Andre Kopitar. I don't know. He's a very difficult guy to play with. He in Minnesota they played him with a lot of guys that really didn't want the puck. He's got to play with a guy who doesn't want the puck. So maybe he'll be great for Byfield. But maybe that's why they got him. Because yeah. Byfield's a guy who doesn't really want the puck. He wants to drive to the net, get him the puck. You know, in in the spots, not really drive the net with the puck. So maybe that's it. Maybe that maybe it's going to be yeah. Byfield that brings out the, you know, he brings he well, brings they, out the best of Byfield. But uh, yeah, I mean, they get Byfield got forty games too. So like, I think we're going to see a big leap from him if if it's going to happen. You know what? L L A fans you know, are already good. saying he's a bust. I heard. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Look, go look at Joe Thornton's stats. Uh, no, he had like 12 no. points in his first season. Just give him. And they were like, He'll well, they should send him down on the minors. Yeah. How is this guy going to learn how to play at 6'4", 215 in the minors? Because he uses it. Yeah. He can't do. It's he, he's relied on his size his whole life. You can't rely on your size in the NHL, right? You, you yeah, can't rely no, I, I on mean, it now. You got to find out other learn. ways. You're not just going to outsize everybody everywhere yeah. you go. And if he goes down to the AHL, he's not going to learn how to do that. The only way play, place he can learn how to do that is in the NHL. That's the same as uh, uh, La Perrier, or La, La Pierre in uh, what's his name, Lafreniere in in New York. In New York, La yeah, same yeah, thing. Laffy and, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm hearing it from the Rangers. My wife's a Rangers fan. She likes them. Um, I I will say, I, I you know, Lafiniere doesn't worry me. It's if we get to New York, uh, it's it's uh, oh, cool. it's the I other cat, Kako Kako Cap. Okay. Yeah, but I hope he gets. It. Yeah, let. Well, I didn't give a grade. You but said you get. I, I think mean, they didn't really this, do a ton, say, but what did you say? Uh, seven and a half, eight. Nah, I did, seven and I a half, eight or seven. something. I said eight, and I mostly seven. because. Okay. Uh, I mean, I like the, the team. I like the, the team. They got a lot of talent coming up in the lineup. There's yeah. a lot of things they can do. I mean, Kuperi and Alex Turcotte are going to be in the minors this year. 
They got a deep, deep team. I do yeah. like the team. I just personally don't think this goaltending is going to get him anywhere. I think I don't think that that's Perlo, the reason. I have to ask you: if they were a hundred percent healthy, if if they had Drew Doughty in the playoffs last year to go, because Dursey was the number one guy, and he's twenty three years old. Also, you know, a guy they got in a trade from the Leafs. Um, Could they have beat Edmonton? Yeah. I think it, let me put I it this way. If Calgary played the way L.A. played against Edmonton, Calgary would have beat Edmonton. Exactly. But Calgary tried exactly. to play this uh, a, a blue line possession game, which was just stupid. And I don't understand it because I love Sutter all to death. I love him, love him, love yeah, him. Yeah, me he too. Did, he yeah. did more for players than ma- most coaches I could ever think of. But why they wouldn't yeah, dump and chase agreed. against the Oilers is beyond me. I don't know. But anyways, if, yeah. if they would have, if Calgary yeah, yeah. would have played like LA did, they would have beat Edmonton. Finally, we got to get to Montreal. We got to. Now there hasn't been too much here. Call it a day. Yeah. Well, you don't want to do uh, the Minnesota Wild because oh, they're before Minnesota? Montreal. Oh yeah, Minnesota Wild. Okay, let's go, Minnesota Wild. Yeah, I I don't I can't well, think what of they what they didn't did. Do. They I'm let, trying to think uh, in my head. Fiala go that we were just talking to, well, talking got, about. Well, and they got they traded Talbot, which I know I know Doug uh, Bill Guerin was like, I don't have to do a damn thing at the draft, but I was surprised they did pull the trigger on that. I would have told Talbot to shut up, because Mark Andre Fleury is 27. <laughs> You know, he's not 27 years old. He's 37. I like the Flurry signing because he didn't cost much. Three and a half million for a guy that high end. I guess you hope Philip Gustafson could be a effective backup. I don't know, man. Uh, are they a better? Are they? Are they? A, I know they they were up against it with the Kaprizov deal, right? So now he's into that big well, contract and, and they, now this they year with the nine million. Parise, so they, you know that yeah, was that. Yeah, so they're eating that. So they're, I think, you know, they're just in a rock and a hard place. He's just going to have to find some cheap deals to help make his team better. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I a six and a half, I, I just didn't see them do anything that made them better. I think they just had to make moves to make moves. You know, I, I think Talbot off the team makes them worse. I think. Fiala off the team makes it worse. Obviously, they had to trade Fiala. They weren't going to be able to sign him RFA. Everybody freaking knew that. It was kind of the way it goes. It's sort of like what happened with with uh, Columbus. And after they got Goudreau, they knew they were going to have to trade a player. So all the GMs are like, whatever. Um, so they try to give it to the least imposing team, right? So I love their team. I love Eric Sinek. I, lo- I had him on my fantasy. He had a great year. Um Zuccarello, they got a good team. They're 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 sort of kind of cut from the LA Kings cloth, right? They don't have anybody that's gonna re well Kaprizov will scare you. Yeah. He's incredible. I gotta take him off. He's probably one He's of the best skaters star, yeah. I've ever seen. I mean, I, I've never seen anybody do that where they skate in the ozone like four or Bar- five. Barzal you know, McDavid it. could do it too. Barzal on the island Who? on the island. He does it, oh, and ever and everybody yeah, on the uh, all the he, other guys don't know what he's doing because they have no creativity in their lineup at all. Besides him, it's sad to watch. But yeah, anyways, uh, uh, at least with Capri, yeah. Kaprizov, they got guys that can keep up with him in the hockey IQ aspect of it. But I mean, I don't right. doubt. I if this team has a chance to win a cup, they have to have a guy like Mark Andre Fleury as their goaltender. They have to hope his 37-year-old body holds up. Uh, when he was in Chicago last year, he played really, really well. It's just the team was pure terrible. Right? I thought so. If he plays yeah, that well for Minnesota, yeah. they could not he play. may have a chance here. But when they yeah. when they bought yeah, no, out, uh, Parise and Suter, they basically were on a four-year, five-year plan to not rebuild but just kind of keep – drafting players and and On, try and yeah. then when that comes the four years or whatever when those guys are off the books they're going to go hard at her and add to this lineup and possibly be a contender mark andre Fleury is not going to be there at that time but there is a kid that's going to be and his name is jesper wallstadt that yeah and they have brock faber they have a great 
they have a Jasper, great Jasper Wallstadt like, looks like he's going to be an absolute crazy good uh, Swedish goalie. Swedish goalie. Yeah, Big Swedish shocker. Goalie. We didn't even talk about a lot of the draft picks here, but uh, uh, my, they are, they've yeah. also got some really good, like you mentioned, one with Faber. I don't know how he's going to be, but they've got Carson Lambos and Ryan O'Rourke coming up the like uh, twin those one of those two guys, and I think Ryan O'Rourke is going to be pretty beastly. So they got some young guys coming up, and I think they're just kind of let's make the playoffs and see what happens. We get Flurry in there, hold out for three four years, and then we'll just attack this roster. And that's what I think yeah, they're doing. They yeah, no, they got great players coming up. You're right. I. Yeah, I, I don't rip. I didn't. I you know I didn't give him a high score up, but I'm not ripping gear, and I think he just yeah. had to do what he had yeah, to I do gave based him a on cap. I don't think yeah. Talbot was all that great to tell you the honest truth. And he was never going to win you a cup anyway, so I don't mind yeah. the deal. Gustafson has some had some good moments there in Montreal. I don't know how he's going to turn out, and I mean backup goaltenders are not sure. terribly hard to find. So. But you hope he could take like forty games, so Flurry doesn't have to carry. I know Flurry wants to play a lot, but you really want him for that playoff run, right? If yeah, you have to play I, 20, 24 games in the playoffs, you know which to play forty games. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's get to, yeah. So I gave him a so, seven. What do you give? Six and a half. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, six and a half, but not a jab or anything. I love the team. Yeah. I I love rooting for him, and honestly. Perlo, it's huge. If Minnesota could win something, it would be so huge. It's one of the biggest hockey states. That's hockey crazy state. It is. It is as close as you can find to a oh, state yeah. that loves hockey yeah. as a provincial state in uh, 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 as a province in Canada in the U.S. I mean, there's Michigan and Massachusetts, but I think I yeah, think Minnesota is the state of town. hockey. In Detroit, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I think many. I think many's the hockey town of. Canada yeah. for sure, or sorry, United States for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, yeah, this won't be long. So, no worries, man. And I don't. Hey, man, this has been great. I've had so much fun. Uh, this has been an awesome thing. So here, I I don't really want to talk about their off season. I think we have to talk about the draft yeah. because that was kind of the, that Doc, was the shocker, right? Yeah. That 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 the Kirby Doc move was a yeah. was a nice trade. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, though. I am oh, not see, a Kirby Doc fan. Oh, wow. We're, two to, I, the, we're off on two to... Yeah. I, I'm a little worried. I mean, he played, you know, he's had some injury problems. No, I like... Look, yeah. he's young. He's 21. So this kid's got a lot to grow. I, you know, but he's had some injuries that kind of scare me where he's had the injuries. Um, and, and look, look. I want the best for these kids. Like, I got to root for these kids. And I know he was a high pick, and I think he played for the C Canadians and the World Juniors and stuff. So I know he was highly thought of. But, he, you know, he kind of slipped in the draft, and Chicago picked him up. And everybody's like, oh, look, we got this guy, and he's 6'4". And, no, he's a good player. I worry a little bit about his 2A game because Chicago might have wrecked him, right, what was going on there. Oh, my God. Um, but, no, it was a great trade. I actually love what um, they, they're doing there in Montreal. They 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 know they have a young core and they've got to they've got to kind of restart over. Like I actually, you know, at first I was like, what are they doing getting rid of um Mark Bergeron? He did such a good job. Um and getting that team to the I thought that was the most overachieving Absolutely. team I've ever seen in NHL. Like maybe the Anaheim Packs that went to the Cup in 03 with Price. Jay Garrett. And a whole bunch of other players. So that's what I went. Yo, yeah, absolutely. And you know, but Weber was, you know, and, and Philip Deneau was incredibly Corey good center wise. So that's so they have two elephants in the room in Montreal, right? Carey Price, is he coming back? His deal is doesn't expire to 2026. So that's a crazy one. I wonder, and like, and he even said he thought he was going to um, go to the um, Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. And I, I kept attending. I said, no, he's not. I go, Ron France is not going to take on that albatross of contract. Not nothing against Carey Price, incredible player. In fact, I have a friend here in Alaska who played Tri Cities, won a national championship mm -hmm. with Carey Price. They're friends. 
Ryan Statner was on that team with Kerry, and and they're still buddies. And I get, you know, you know, I hear about what kind of a good guy he is and stuff like that. Um, uh, the like you said, the doc trade was great. I to me, the the big shock was the the, sh- you know, getting the kid from I knew they were going to from take Slovakia, Slovakia. I knew they were. Yep. You knew they I were knew taking they were him. Take the Slo- I knew they were going to take the Slovak. Well, it sure felt like. It, well, it sure felt like by draft time that's who they were going to take too, because I was starting to think that. That we were going to see, and I had even heard an argument for Logan Cooley well, to be picked that high. So uh, I, you know, a few months before the draft. So that was definitely the shock. Um, you know, it, to me, Montreal. I think they took a look at their roster and they said, "We got Suzuki." You know, they got Dvorak to that deal. He's not. I mean, he's only twenty six, by the way, Dvorak. Everybody, he's just played the league for a long time, so everybody thinks he's older than dirt. They got Jake Evans. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know their their entire prospect pool. Yeah, I okay. think they just thought they the got upside a lot of work with, to do with it. Yeah, but I don't see a, a ton of. I mean, I don't know who's a center and who's going to come up. Yada yada yada. I'll just say this: like, um, they obviously felt like Slavoski was the big, the you know the, you know he's a six four two eighteen at eighteen years old. He looks like because of the Olympics, I think really helped, right? Was Olympics and stuff, or uh, I just you know, the, you know, I I give them like an eight just because I feel like they they're setting themselves up to grow into like a really great team. And they're not going to be there for a while, but you talked about look at those tr- contracts they can move. Savard, yeah, okay, he's he, his deal's three and a half million. They could trade him. Yeah, he's not great. Okay. Uh, they could move Edmondson if they need to. He's 29. I, his deal, they don't have anybody outside of Price and Nick Suzuki's contract's a little worrisome. But Suzuki played all the games. He had 61 points. I don't know. He's not an, an $8 million player, but he's only making 7.8. I don't know. I like the kid. He's only 22. I think he's going to develop in. I think Caulfield is going to be an awesome sniper. Um, I kind of associate Caulfield with... Uh, do you remember Cliff Ronning? Sort he's of. like a Cliff Ronning, but he's a little bit more of a goal scorer. He's a but he's kind of that kind of guy that could make a difference. It could, he's sort yeah, of, he's a he's much sort better of goal like scorer than Cliff Ronning. From Ottawa or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah, we'll of talk great about that off next seasons, time. right? So, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, and then they pick up Dadnov. Basically, yeah. they didn't have to give anything up for him, right? Because Vegas is having to do cap dumps, too. They're great. I think they're, you know, I don't know that it just really depends on who plays goalie for them. If they have Allen and Price, they're probably, they could be in the mix. But I think they probably know they're going to be a a lower end team for a while. I thought the St. Louis thing was brilliant. He came in and really did a good job. I mean, I like all the moves they're making. So, I mean, if I'm a Habs fan, I just have to show a little patience. The problem is that has been the problem in those markets, especially there. So, yeah, I liked what they did. Uh, it was okay. I How mean, Slavkovsky, I knew they were going to take him. And the reason why, and a lot of people aren't talking about this yet, and I want, I'm really going to be interested to see how much it's true. Shane Wright apparently yeah. has a serious attitude problem. He's an arrogant jerk. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Now, it's weird because on the ice, he doesn't play like that. He's one of the best. He looks like one of the best defensive forwards that we've seen in a long time on the ice. But apparently, he's yeah. a jerk. And uh, he's that's really the main reason why. And, and there's guys like, that have attitudes like that that they tend to fall, that are error. They tend to fall. Can, uh, another guy, a guy that he can, uh, another guy you can compare him to that as far as attitude is concerned was Alexander Dagg when Ottawa picked him. Oh my God. Hopefully he doesn't well, have that I mean, career. He has, he, I, he apparently, I, yeah. and I don't know if this is true, but when you see, when you see two teams, when, when you see teams skip a guy like that, you know, Montreal. Yeah, Arizona three, skips on him. New Jersey skips, skips a little more understandable because they 
they really didn't need yeah, a, they center, need a but center. Arizona could have, yeah, and no. Montreal skipped on him. Slavkowski, Slavkowski thought, looks like a good kid, but I thought, Shane Wright's more ready now. But I heard all those rumors, and I'm like, no way Montreal is going to take a guy like that right now. I I don't think so, and they ended up taking Slavkowski. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say I, you know, I I liked seeing him kind of mean mug. I hope he has a chip on his shoulder. I hope it makes you know, look at. I, I mean, I'm kind of regionally a Kraken fan now too because they're very close to where I live. Um, I could go see their games probably easier than anything else. But I also love the Coyotes. I'm a bit of a closet Coyotes fan because I get to see a lot of their games. My wife works down in Arizona, so I go with her half the time, and and I go to games every time. Um, I, I just think Bill Armstrong had a higher grade on Cooley. I had read I had read stuff that Cooley could go ahead just based on the upside. I thought the Slavoski stuff was way more about the upside than it was the attitude. But I mean, you you you're in tune to it, man. You got your ear to the railroad tracks. You you may know. I really hope Wright turns into a great player. I don't think it's a sad story that a kid went to a, I, I a hope, better situation. I hope, and there was the other uh, aspect of it too. It's see if he is sort of on the arrogant side, yeah, it is quite help. possible. I, I you know by the way the whole thing where he looked at the Montreal people, I don't. I think that was overplayed. I don't think he did that kind of stuff. I liked it. I don't think he I did like it. it. I don't think it was a thing. And he said it wasn't a thing. I don't think it was a well, thing. Well, I think it, it was a thing. But I, he he did say that if Montreal doesn't take him, he's going to kick their ass or whatever. But, well, he said that about all three teams. Like he, New Jersey, he's not going to get to play as much, but he's definitely going to get to play the Arizona Coyotes a lot too. But my thinking was he told his agent he wanted to go to Seattle. I think that's – honestly, I think that's no, what it was. I, I, think, I, did, I think so he wanted a, to go to Seattle. So they did an ESPN draft thing, and, and you can actually hear the audio with him and his dad. I think he thought he was going number one. So they had him on mic. You can watch it on e- okay. ESPN Plus. Yeah. Um, and the audio, uh, uh, not to disagree with you, but I think you're you're flat well, out maybe, wrong on this. Maybe I, you're right. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying about Shane Wright being a, a bad teammate or whatever. That could all come to fruition. You could be right on that. But there's straight audio with him and his dad, and his dad, you know, like the tone changes as he gets so. I think he thought, and I think he was told, because you know how these GMs are, that I think that Montreal was going to, tr- they were going to ask for a trade for Shane Wright. Because very rarely do you have a guy who's a consensus number, wasn't he the consensus number one for like three years? I've heard his name for a long time. Like we know Connor Bedard or Mishkoff is going to be the number one pick next year, right? Like hands down. He didn't have, a, been su- hearing that? He didn't have a super year last year to what people thought he would have. Uh, that was part of the problem. Well, well, right, but did that have more to do with the pandemic and the OHL? Everybody, and all everybody had the same issue. So. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I'm just saying, like some some guys, some some things affect things certain, you know, di- different ways. You know what I'm saying? Some guys don't handle adversity for dirt certain reasons. I'm not crapping on Shane Wright or saying Shane Wright's going to be. Then no. I hope he's next Patrice Bergeron. For one, um, I could tell you from the the Emerald City hockey guys who I know, um, R.J. Ekinos and uh, Dylan. Um, they 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 cover the 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 crack and and they have their own little uh, media company. Check them out. Reach out to them, man. Sure, I'll try to put you in contact with them too if you if you like. Cool. Um, they were extremely happy to get right, and I think they would have been fine with Logan Cooley, but I think they thought, wow, they may have gotten the best player in the draft. I we'll see. I just hope that he uses the motivation. If he did have arrogance, maybe it helps him bring it down. I mean, how how is it though? I have to ask you. You there's not a, a more hockey crazed country than Canada. This kid has been told since he was 15 he's going to be the number one overall pick, and then Montreal passes on him. And Montreal is like a, it's Montreal. I mean, they're the Yankees of hockey. They've won 23 world titles. They have 23 cups. They have some of the most storied players to ever play. And I know they haven't won since 1993, but neither has any other Canadian team. I just I just wonder, you know, that he probably was like, he thought this would be the best situation for him. Because I, you know, you know, I'll say this, and you can you could say whether I'm right or not, but I know there are Canadian players that don't like to play in Canada. 
And I know there are U.S. players that do like to play in Canada. I don't like that narrative that they don't. Because if I'm a kid, who you know, if you you even play in a hotbed area like Alaska, where we've had Scott Gomez, Nate Thompson, Matt Carl, you know, Brandon Dubinsky, we've had some really good NHL players. Uh, the kid for Boston, Jeremy Swayman's from Anchorage, he's going to be a great goalie. Um, those kids love playing in hotbed hockey town. Like Gomez talks about his time in Montreal. He said it's nothing like any, any other place. And he played in New York, which is the Mecca, but it's like the third or fourth most popular sport there. And so it's just one of those things where like, you know, you go to Canada and you play for the Leafs, Oilers, Canadians, uh, even the Vancouver Canucks or the Calgary Flames, like everybody knows who you are and where you live and all kinds of crazy, creepy stuff, you know? So I just, uh, you know, I feel like um, maybe he just probably had his heart set there and was told one thing and then maybe another. If I, if you get your hands on the videos from the ESPN plus stuff, watch that. It's really interesting. I'll try to find it for you. I'll DM you the, the link. And I know that you guys have different, um, services and stuff in Canada, but at least I get the name of the show to you and you can watch it. It's, uh, it's interesting. And I think you might change your opinion on maybe I'm pretty sure he thought he was going number one. Okay, and well, I think you know he, what? You're, you're probably right. Cause it was just, those are one of two things. The other thing yeah. I think that, you know, I'm just putting all the pieces together. If he has an attitude, an arrogant attitude, you know what arrogant attitude people really want? They they do, they're not taking a they're not taking a discount. Yeah, they're gonna want top freaking dollar, and I'll tell well, you but entry level entry level. I don't doesn't I don't know what. Yeah, but I don't care. You're gonna have a contract coming up, and this guy's gonna get top dollar. This is huge now in the NHL when they're drafting. Who your who's That's his true. agent? If he's got one of those agents that isn't going to bend, people won't draft him. You, you let's, fall. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm we'll interested. look at that. So anyways, we'll look at that Pat next time. On, but... Yeah, we'll, no worries. Uh, we'll look at that yeah. next time. We get, we're running a little long here. So yeah, my I, I gave the I gave the Canadians a seven. I said eight. I gave him a seven. I like the Doc move. I like Kirby Doc. I think he got just kind of messed up in Chicago. You know, yeah. like it was a terrible play. You can't judge – the fact that he got 26 points as a 21-year-old with that yeah, lineup in the crap that they went through, I think is pretty darn good, actually. And I love his attitude. I love his heart. He's, I love the way he plays. Yep. So I think that was a good move. I gave it a 7 because they just didn't do much. Uh, I, the draft, well, Slavkovsky, I, yeah. we'll see. You know, I don't, I don't know. So I'm not putting any stock into that really at all. So, yeah. That's why I gave them a seven. Because they didn't do anything, but yeah. they didn't do anything bad either, really. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I. I again, they have those. The two. Just to polish up on Montreal, and then I'll say goodnight to you. Um. I, they got to figure out what they're doing with Jonathan Drouin, and they got to figure out what's going on. Yeah. With yeah. Price. That's the other reason too. Well, Price is just going to yeah. either and retire then, or not. Drouin. They got so many bad contracts on that roster. That's not Gordon or Hughes's fault. Like Hoffman, Brendan, Go Brendan Gallagher is not a good one either, right? At six yeah, and a half he's billion, to fade. He, they might be able to get. They might be able to get rid now. of that contract, but Hoffman, that is horrible, terrible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what? Yep. Yeah. All right, Steve let, Perlo, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, I loved having you on. Uh, I'll get this out to the land if they've got like a t the time to watch it, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, but I will have you on again, my friend, for sure. We're going to be doing live streams, don't you know? And I'll probably be doing live streams with uh, the Sports yeah. Beard. And uh, Peyton on the yeah, radio yeah, will be yeah. on again. We'll try to get all three of us on at one time. Why not? Well, I can do um, – I can bring up to nine other people on oh. my thing, no problem. So, yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do if, it. If you want to have Peyton on – I'd love to have both of you to talk Edmonton Oilers, man. That would okay, be great. Okay, we'll go on your channel and, and we'll tell everybody to get over there and we'll get you all subbed up. Have a great day, everybody. Awesome. By the way, everybody, I forgot to do this. Make sure you're subbing up to the channel and uh, telling us what you think about our picks and stuff like that. Have a great day, everybody. That's our full 42K. Bye.